Today we're exploring a range of investment portfolio strategies and I'll be showing you how to build them using ETFs. It's important to note that the information I'm about to show you is factual and for educational purposes, it is not financial advice or a recommendation. It's essential to do your own research and consider your own circumstances before making any investment decision. The first category we're gonna talk about is the one ETF portfolio. With one ETF, you can invest in shares across a range of markets, sectors, or even the entire global economy, all through the convenience of one fund. Now, this approach is all about simplicity. Instead of juggling multiple stocks or rebalancing and constantly monitoring a number of assets, a single ETF can do all the work for you. This could be a global ETF that covers many countries, or it could be a multi-asset ETF that holds stocks, bonds, and other things like property. Let's start with some all-in-one portfolios that include access to some of the world's best companies and stocks from across the world. If you want to diversify global exposure without picking individual markets or thinking too hard about what stocks you're going to invest in, three examples that I have here are IIO, IVV, and VGS. They all invest in the similar companies, top tier companies, but it's whether you want the top 100, the top 500, or the top 3,000 companies in your portfolio. Me personally, I find less diversification is actually better or good enough for me, so I'm on the side of 100 as opposed to 3,000 if I'm looking for a global ETF. Now, if you want to narrow in on a specific country or region of your choosing, then you can build a portfolio with one ETF that way as well. These portfolios can allow investors to take advantage of specific economic conditions, growth, market trends in one particular area or region. For example, here in Australia, and the nature of the stock market and the way company tax works means that Companies are very incentivized to pay out high dividends, which they do so on a regular basis. If you're looking for that kind of factor when it comes to investing, then looking at a country like Australia could be an option for you. Here, some ETFs that you can utilize to invest in the Australian market would be SFY, the top 50, the A200, the top 200, and then VAS, the most popular ETF in Australia, which covers the 300 largest companies on Australian Stock Exchange. I just want to point out as well the last ETF as an example. While it's labeled as the Asian ETF from Vanguard here, the VAE, as you can see in the map, that's Asia. But the Asian ETF from Vanguard only includes five or six com companies, mostly China. So just be cautious of labels when you see things labeled as China or Asia and what's included and excluded in terms of an ETF. We can now have a look at diversified portfolios. These are for investors seeking more than just investments in stocks, but a balanced mix of stocks, bonds, real estate, and maybe some others within that portfolio. These are like a fund of funds and they contain multiple underlying funds within that single ETF. They're perfect for investors looking for a one size fits all solution. And the advantage here is that investors can achieve greater diversification and balance without having to manage multiple individual funds. Vanguard is a leader in providing diversified funds, but they do have a number of options that vary in the way they are built. As you can see here, there's four options of all-in-one diversified portfolios here. From left to right, you've got conservative all through to high growth. They all include the same underlying funds within them, such as Australian fixed interest, uh, cash, shares, international shares, emerging markets, and small companies. There's eight funds within each of these funds. It's just the proportion of each asset that differs. As you can see on the left, the conservative portfolios have a high proportion of fixed interest, but then towards the right, it's proportionally skewed towards shares. Then within the middle, you can see a breakdown of the mix between growth and income producing assets, with growth being the high risk, high reward, and the income aspect being smoother, a smoother ride. Another option of a diversified fund is this one by Better Shares, which is an all stock portfolio, as opposed to Vanguard, which had a proportion of fixed interest and cash within its portfolios. As you can see, there's a number of layers to diversification. And in this aspect, it's an ETF that includes ETFs within it. This ETF mostly made up of the A200, which is the Australian stock market. Then you've got VTI, which is a US stock market ETF. Then that's topped up with the rest of the world type ETF, SPDW, and then the Emerging Markets ETF. So four simple, obvious ETFs there within a portfolio, no cash, no fixed interest. So if you love stocks, but want to be even more diverse than one ETF, you can buy an ETF with four ETFs in it. Portfolios inspired by renowned investors. These portfolios all draw inspiration from some of the world's most well-known and esteemed investors. 
And through the use of ETFs, you can nearly replicate their successful strategies. This is an opportunity to not just learn from the best, but to construct an investment portfolio that reflects their wisdoms and approaches all through the flexible and accessible structure of ETFs. Of course, we have to start with the Warren Buffett portfolio, suggested portfolio. This is actually not how he invests as he is a professional investor who picks and trades stocks on a regular basis, but this is what he actually recommends 90% of investors do because it's so simple and so straightforward. 90% in the S&P 500, 10% in bonds. That's all there is to it. You can replicate that here on the ASX through IVV, and B-O-N-D. Personally, I find you can interchange bonds and fixed interest at this stage interchangeably. So you've got the option there to pick one which you find it more comfortable with. Now, if you're an Australian and you've read a book on personal finance, it would be Scott Pape's book, The Barefoot Investor. A number of years ago, he provided this investment strategy. It's a mix of Australian and international shares with a bit of property and fixed interest thrown in. You can replicate that by using ETFs such as STW, VSO, IOO, VAP, and VAF. So it's a five fund portfolio. And I find it's quite well structured and quite rigid to a number of different economic conditions. This one is probably suited to those looking for a balanced, straightforward investment strategy based off some barefoot principles, I'd say. The Yale Endowment Fund is an investment portfolio that was run by the late David Swenson when he was the chief investment officer there. Now this portfolio, got a lot of attention simply because it was performing and had done so for a very long time. And that was attributed to David Swenson's investment philosophy. This is how the investment portfolio broke down. It was a good mix of stocks, both locally and abroad. Depending on where you live might depend on how you build this portfolio. As an Australian trading on the ASX, I would consider the US market to be the equivalent of IVV, the S&P 500. Then you've got REITs, which is the property ETF, VAP. Overseas stocks, we can consider them local stocks here in Australia, such as VAS. And you've got tips and bonds. This is a very balanced approach. So also consider that there's a high proportion of property here. I actually find this is a really strong portfolio because there's a really good balance of stocks, property, and bonds. So irrespective of market conditions, you're going to have a reasonable return. Ray Dalio. If you've been on YouTube, you've probably seen this guy pop up in a video. Ray Dalio, of course, is the founder of Bridgewater Associates, a billion dollar investment fund. And he's designed this portfolio to perform well under any economic condition. It's a mix of stocks, bonds, commodities, and gold. And as you'll notice, a bit dissimilar to other portfolios in that it's dominated by fixed income. And that's really there to smooth the ride. And it's also why the likes of gold and commodities are included. Only 30% is attributed to the stock market. I've gone and said, hey, DHHF is what you can use to invest in the stock market for this portfolio. You've got a couple of bond options there. The VGB, IGB, for gold, GOLD, and then co commodities, take your pick. There's not too many available on the ASX, but there is food or OOO, which is an oil ETF. So you could replicate this with five or six ETFs here. Although for most of the time, the stock market does a good job in providing returns and your portfolio is only going to capture 30% of that. So something to consider if you're looking at this portfolio. John Bogle, the original index fund trailblazer. He started Vanguard and created his own index funds to combat the high fees of mutual funds out there. Now, he's got a really simplified portfolio similar to Warren Buffett, but this one has a bit of a strategic lens to it. He suggests that you go into three different asset classes, local stocks, overseas stocks, and bonds. For simplicity, we'll split that up by stocks and bonds. But John's recommendation for this portfolio was to set your age in bonds, suggesting that the percentage of stocks would cover 100 minus your age. So in this example, as a 40 year old, I'm not actually 40 yet, but as a 40 year old, you would have 40% of your money in bond and the rest in stocks. As a 20 year old, you might have 20% of your money in bonds, 80% in stocks. This is obviously a strategic lens to the way you build your portfolio, but it's one that does help and kind of makes sense. You can either recreate these three ETFs through either a three fund portfolio or a two fund portfolio, depending on how much emphasis you wanna place on local and overseas stock markets. Now, here's another portfolio example for investors looking for a steady approach. The, the permanent portfolio is a investment strategy that aims to deliver consistent returns across all market conditions. This was developed by Harry Brown, a renowned investment analyst and politician in the 80s. As you can see, he's written a few books and, and that's him there on the book cover. This portfolio consists of four asset classes, stocks, bonds, gold, and cash. 
The reason I really want to include his portfolio is because of Harry Brown himself. He actually passed away back in 2006. So spending a bit of time and attention to when a model portfolio might have been promoted or explained or offered to you as an investor, because it's hard to actually know whether he would recommend this type of portfolio in a modern day environment. Now it's time to look over how some of the biggest funds in the world invest its money. A sovereign wealth fund is like a big savings account, but instead of being used for a person or a family, it's for a whole country. A government puts money into this fund, usually from selling natural resources like oil or gas, and can invest it to make more money. The money in these funds is usually helped to pay for things like schools, hospitals, or just to save for the future and for the people in that country. Pretty highly diversified portfolios across a number of asset classes, regions, and sectors. Pension Fund Global, also known as the Norwegian Oil Fund, is a sovereign wealth fund of Norway. Largest sovereign fund in the world, which owns over $1.4 trillion in assets. It's invested in three different things, stocks, fixed interest, and property. And so that's really easy to recreate with simple ETFs. Now, the success of this fund hasn't come from what it's invested in, but the fact that it's contributed significantly to this fund over recent years. You can build your own Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund through DHHF, VAF, and VAP here on the ASX. China's Sovereign Wealth Fund is called the China Investment Corporation, and it's responsible for managing part of China's foreign exchange reserves. Invest in a variety of asset classes, including stocks, bonds, and some real estate. It's not completely transparent in everything you invest in, so I've had to assume and make some judgment calls on what I believe a good equivalent of this portfolio might look like if you were to invest in it yourself. They do let us know that 35% of it is money is in international stocks with a proportion in bonds as well. And there's that's nearly half their fund is put towards hedge funds, commodities, property, and infrastructure. You can replicate that with five to seven ETFs here in Australia, with the major allocation going towards international stocks. The last sovereign wealth fund I want to touch on is a bit of a doozy. It's the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund, also known as the Public Investment. Now, this fund invests both domestically and internationally in a variety of investments. It's not completely transparent like China's fund, but includes ownership of massive organizations such as Saudi Aramco, which is pretty much the biggest company in the world and also has stakes in Uber, Newcastle United, SoftBank, and Live Golf. It's nearly impossible to get close to mimicking the Saudi Wealth Fund just due to the number of investments it has, but there are some ETFs that you can look to invest in a similar way. And that's why I've included a number of ETFs here, such as ICLN, which is a clean energy ETF, XLK, which is a technology sector ETF, as well as infrastructure, emerging markets, and KSA, which is a New York Stock Exchange ETF focusing on Saudi Arabia. And that, folks, is a rundown of some portfolios that investors around the world are using. Remember, no one size fits all when it comes to investing. What works for me might not work for you, and that's okay. The important thing is to find a strategy that you're comfortable with and you can stick to for the long haul. Again, please note this was for informational purposes only and wasn't any kind of personal investment recommendation. Let me know in the comments if there's a portfolio strategy that has worked for you. I'd love to hear about your experiences. And if you're just starting out on your investment journey, I hope this has given you some food for thought. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want more investing insights. Until next time, happy investing.